This is going to be Ezra chapter 7. Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So let's go, and we're going to continue doing the temple series. I think we should get going on Ezra chapter 7. I'm going to skip around a little bit here. Verse 1. Now after these things in the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Ezra the son of Shariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, uh, skip verse 2, skip verse 3, skip verse 4, verse 5, the son of Abishua, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the chief priest. So Aaron is a Levite of the tribe of Levi, and he is actually a direct descendant of Aaron, who is the brother of Moses. So there you go. Verse 6, this Ezra went up from Babylon and he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. And the king granted him all his request according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. And there went up some of the children of Israel and of the priests and of the Levites and the singers and the porters and the Nethanins unto Jerusalem in the seventh year of Artaxerxes the king. And he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of the king. For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon, and on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem according to the good hand of his God upon him. For Ezra had prepared his heart, ah, for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. Now this is the copy of the letter that the king Artaxerxes gave unto Ezra the, the priest, the scribe, even a scribe of the words of the commandments of the Lord and of his statutes to Israel. Artaxerxes, king of kings, unto Ezra the priest, a scribe of the law of the God of heaven, perfect peace and at such a time. I make a decree that all they of the people of Israel and of his priests and Levites in my realm, which are minded of their own free will, which are minded of their own free will, so uh, to go up to Jerusalem, go with thee. So some of the people went to Jerusalem and some of the Judahites stayed behind. Keep that in mind. Verse 14. Forasmuch as thou art sent of the king and of his seven counselors to inquire concerning Judah and Jerusalem according to the law of thy God, which is in thine hand, and to carry the silver and gold which the king and his counselors have freely offered unto the king of Israel, whose habitation is in Jerusalem. And all the silver and the gold that thou canst find in all the province of Babylon with the freewill offering of the people and of the priests offering willingly for the house of their God which is in Jerusalem that thou mayest buy speedily with this money bullocks, rams, lambs with their meat offering and their drink offerings and offer them upon the altar of the house of your God which is in Jerusalem and whatsoever shall seem good to thee and to thy brethren to do with the rest of the silver and the gold, that do after the will of your God. The vessels also that are given thee for the servants' service of the house of thy God, those deliver thou before the God of Jerusalem. And whatsoever more shall be needful for the house of thy God, which thou shalt have occasion to bestow, bestow it out of the king's treasure house. And I, even I, Artaxerxes the king, do make a decree to all the treasurers which are beyond the river, that whatsoever Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven, shall require of you, it shall be done speedily. Unto a hundred talents of silver, and unto a hundred measures of wheat, and unto a hundred uh, baths of wine, 
and to a hundred baths of oil and salt without prescribing how much. Whatsoever is commanded by the God of heaven, let it be diligently done for the house of the God of heaven. For why should there be wrath against the realm of the king and his sons? And we certify you that touching any of the priests and Levites, singers, porters, nephinims, or ministers of this house of God, it shall not be lawful to impose toll, tribute, or custom upon them. In other words, uh, no, no taxes. How's that for a... Uh, no taxes. That would be nice, huh? Matter of fact, uh, the tithe that the churches so love to preach on that you're supposed to give to them, the tithe was only to support the tribe of Levi that was not given a portion of the lamb, uh, land. The tribe of Levi and the tribe of Levi alone was to be given the tithe. So unless your pastor can prove to you that he's a, of the tribe of Levi, he's not, uh, that's not a tithe. An offering, yes. But if he tells you it's a tithe, he's probably, chances are he's a liar. Because only the Levites were to take the tithe. And that was to only support the tribe of Levi that were not given a portion or the inheritance of the land. So when they talk about tithing, but yet the, they tell you that all the laws were nailed to the cross, of course, they don't, they don't want to tell you the tithe law was nailed to the cross. No, no, no. Bring that into the, you know, give us your tithe. Yeah. But all the other laws were nailed to the cross. Yeah, that tells you who they serve, right? All right. Uh, according to the Bible Dictionary, that nethinims, N-E-T-H-I-N-I-M-S, means given or offered, uh, or it can mean return from the captivity or servants of the Levites. Uh, it's used 18 times in the Bible. And in the Strong's, Uh, means temple servants given to duty. So that's what a nephinim is. I didn't even know what that was. So, All right, uh, verse 25. And thou, Ezra, after the wisdom of thy God that is in thine hand, set magistrates and judges which may judge all the people that are beyond the river, all such as know the laws of thy God, and teach ye them that know them not. And well, whosoever will not do the law of thy God and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily, speedily, speedily upon him, whether it be unto death or to banishment or to confiscation of goods or to imprisonment. Boy, I wish we had, uh, I wish we had some leaders that would impose that today. Uh, I would much rather, you know, it's it's sickening. People will tell you that God's laws are, oh, well, you know, we can't follow God's laws. That's evil. You know, that's bad. That's, you know, Old Testament nailed to the cross. That's done away with. You know, things like murders should be put to death. But these are the same people that will support God's laws. You know, Walmart's open. Uh, abortion clinics are open. But the churches are closed. Oh, and the synagogues are open too, and the and the mosques are open also. It's only the churches that are closed. Uh, but you know what? I'm glad the churches are closed because they're garbage, anyways. They're filth. You know, if they're on TV or if they're popular, you know they're not teaching. They're not teaching the God's stuff. Uh, that's well. That's my opinion. Of course. Jesus is going to be the judge of that, but I'm just voicing my opinion. And uh, I might have to apologize to one or two uh, one day, but until then, that's my opinion. Verse 27, Blessed be the Lord God of our fathers, which hath put such a thing as this in the Lord's heart to, be, 
beautify the house of the Lord which is in Jerusalem, and hath extended mercy unto me before the king and his counselors, and before all the king's mighty princes. And I was strengthened as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me, and I gathered together out of Israel chief men to go up with me. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go to uh, Ezra chapter 8. I'm going to skip to verse 20 because I don't want to make this a too long. Uh, the, the rest of it's genealogy. All right, verse 20. Ezra 8, 20. Also of the Nethanims, whom David and the princes had appointed for the service of the Levites. So, yeah, they're the servants of the Levites. 220 Nethanims, all of them were expressed by name. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahva, that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him, but his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. Then I separated twelve of the chief of the priests, Sherebiah, Hashabiah, and ten of the brethren with them, and weighed unto them the silver and the gold, and the vessels, even the offering of the house of our God, which the king and his counselors and his lords and all Israel there presented, offered. I even weighed under their hands 650 talents of silver and silver vessels, 100 talents, and of gold, and 100 talents. People, let me tell you something. 100 talents is, is uh, a talent is about 70 pounds or 32 kilos. That's a lot of gold, people. Uh, I ain't no telling how much that would be worth. Boy, that's, oof. And 20 basins of gold of a thousand drams, and two vessels of fine copper, precious as gold. And I said unto them, You're, Ye are holy unto the Lord. The vessels are holy also, and the silver and the gold are a freewill offering unto the Lord God of, of your fathers. Watch ye and keep them until ye weigh them before the chief of the priests and the Levites, and chief of the fathers of Israel at Jerusalem, in the chambers of the house of the Lord. So took the priests and the Levites the weight of the silver and the gold in our vessels to bring them to Jerusalem unto the house of our God. Then we departed from the river of Ahava on the twelfth day of the first month to go unto Jerusalem. And the hand of our God was upon us, and he delivered us from the hand of the enemy, and such as lay in wait by the way. And we came to Jerusalem and abode there three days. Now on the fourth day was the silver and the gold and the vessels weighed in the house of our God by the hand of Merimoth, the son of Uriah the priest, and with him was Eliezer the son of Phinehas, and with him was Josabad the son of Jeshua, and Noadiah the son of Benui, Levites, by number and by weight of every one, and all the weight was written at that time. And the children of those that had been carried away, which were come out of the captivity, offered burnt offerings unto the God of Israel, twelve bullocks, for all Israel. Twelve bullocks for all Israel. One for each tribe, right? Twelve bullocks for all Israel. Ninety and six rams. Seven, seventy and seven lambs. Twelve he goats for a sin offering. All this was a burnt offering unto the Lord. And they delivered the king's commissions unto the king's lieutenants and to the governors on this side the river. And they furthered the people in the house of God. He goats. Do you know uh, they they offered twelve he goats for a sin offering? What do he goats uh, look like? They got horns. What's the symbol of Baphomet? You know the goat god. Isn't it always a goat? You know, uh, did you ever see the Rolling Stones album Goat's Head Soup? Uh, what's that? The pentagram, the five-pointed star facing downward, and they put the the face of the uh, goat in it. 
Yeah. You know, Jesus talked about separating the sheep from the goats. You know, it, it's just amazing that the uh, Satanists always uh, do the opposite of what the Bible says to do. I mean, it took me a, about a year to figure that out. Well, not really, but what I did was is I spent a year uh, studying the occult so that I would recognize it in churches. And, um, for example, the Mormons, the Mormon temple, they strongly tell their people, do not become a Mason. Do not join the Freemasons. Do not do it. They're evil. Don't do it. But you know why? Because when you go to the Masonic uh, Lodge and you look at all the symbols on the, on the temple and everything and, and, it, and all their uh, writings and, and their books, and then you go to the Mormon temple, guess what? You see all the same symbols. Yeah. So, you know, people say, oh, well, Joseph Smith was a Mason. Uh, he might have been. I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me. I would believe it, but I don't have any proof. But uh, they have the same symbols. So the Masonic Lodge and the Freemasons, they pro I'm sure they have the same father, you know. And the Masonic, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the Mormons, um, believe it or not, in their Doctrines and Covenant book, teach that Jesus is the brother of Satan. So think about this. Their Messiah is Satan's brother. Yeah, their Christ is Satan's brother. Do you want Satan's brother for your Messiah? Yeah, I pass. But, hey, that's, you know. All right, so in Ezra 8, listen to this. Here's where we're starting to get into the meat. They went through the genealogy. Now, People, let me tell you something. The reason they kept the genealogy was because they wanted to be sure the bloodlines were pure. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israel. They didn't want Canaanites in there. They didn't want Hittites in there. The Perizzites, the Sinites, the Moabites, the Ammonites, all the rest of those ites. Uh, all the ites were bad news, except for the Israelites. Now, I know the Bible says not to pay attention to endless genealogies. All right, because, you know, when you're talking about millions of people, you could spend your whole lifetime just studying genealogies. It's real simple. Are you of the holy seed or the unholy seed? I mean, it's as simple as that. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. And he told the you-know-whos, but, ye, uh, but ye, are not of, uh, ye are not of my sheep. So, you know, that's the Bob paraphrase. All right, so, and when people tell you that, oh, well, you know, that was the Old Testament. Now we're in the New Testament. And what do they do? They'll take the exception and use that to ignore the rule. They'll say, well, Ruth was a Moabite. Was Ruth actually a Moabite? Or did she just happen to live in the land of Moab? Uh, was Simon, one of the apostles, a Canaanite in... Uh, I forget what book it's in. Probably Matthew. I don't know. I don't want to look it up. But was he a Canaanite? Or did he just happen to live in the land of Canaan? Or was he a Canaanite by blood? I think he was just a Canaanite by geographical area. I mean, if you go by where I live, you'd say, well, Bob's a Floridian. Because I've lived in Florida probably at least three quarters of my life. Actually, more than that. Probably about 85% of my life. But I wasn't born here. I was born in Kentucky. Went to basic training in Kentucky. 
at Fort Knox. You know, everybody was like, oh, yeah, Bobby, Bob was born in Louisville. Uh, you know, hey, Bob, uh, you know, because they looked at my, uh, the sergeants looked at my records. And they said, oh, yeah, Bob's a native Kentucky boy. He can show you around when you guys, you know, want to hit the clubs or whatever. And I'm like, dude, if, unless we go down to Miami, I, I can't show you around. I don't know anything. I mean, the only thing I knew about Kentucky was... Uh, uh, Churchill Downs and horses and um, bourbon, you know, and I don't even like bourbon. I never really liked bourbon, but my grandfather was a master distiller for national distilleries. How is that relevant? Yeah, it's not really, but I'm just, you know, telling you, you know. So to call me a Kentucky boy, you know, even though I was born there, I but listen to this carefully. This is really, really, really the meat of the Bible that churches just won't touch. Now listen to this. Ezra 9. Boy, I tell you what, they hate this. So they weren't, they're going through the genealogy. Verse 1. Now when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves. Oh, my God. They didn't separate themselves. You know, what, is, what are they trying to do with America and Europe and the United Kingdom? Are they trying to separate us from all the other people? Or are they having trying to have unlimited third world immigration? open borders the Bible wants us to be separated and segregated but that's a dirty word among the you know who's and the liberal people now when these things were done the prince princes came to me saying the people of Israel and the priests and Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. Verse 2, listen to this. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. Now remember, Ezra was the priest. He was a direct descendant of Aaron, who was a brother of Moses. And he says, the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands, which God absolutely forbid. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I suggest you get into the book of Genesis and keep reading until you get to Revelation. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were all told, don't let your children marry the Canaanites. Don't do it. What did Esau do? Jacob's brother, son of Isaac, married a Hittite, one of the Canaanite tribes. And let me tell you what. If there's a holy seed, that means there's an unholy seed. You can't have a holy seed unless there's an unholy seed. Okay, there's sterile and there's unsterile. There's clean and there's unclean. But my pastor said that it doesn't matter that God loves everybody. Take it up with Ezra, chapter 9 and verse 2. Don't argue with me. Argue with the Lord. Do you know in... Up until 1964, generally in most states, interracial marriages were illegal. Do you know why the state came up with marriage licenses? 
It was so that the state could examine the people to see that there was not interracial marriages. They were forbidden. Am I saying it's right? Am I saying it's wrong? No, I'm just telling you. That was the purpose of the marriage license. And then the Supreme Court struck it down and said, nope, we ain't going to allow this. That's racist. Segregation. Dirty word. Now they want us to be all mixed up. But let me tell you something, people. Back when we had segregation and marriage licenses that forbid interracial marriage, guess what? Abortion was illegal. Sodomy was illegal. Uh, wow. Uh, back then, we had silver coins. A silver dime would buy two candy bars. Huh. Women wore scarves on their heads, a covering. I remember that when I was a child. Half the women out and about would wear scarves on their head. I remember this. Women wore uh, long skirts. They didn't show you their legs. And they didn't have uh, dresses with down the middle where their breasts were hanging out, you know. And trust me, I used to perform weddings, hundreds of weddings. I I know about weddings. I know about marriage licenses. I looked I looked all this stuff up. You know, America changed. We actually had prayer in Jesus' name, and Bible reading when I was in first grade in public elementary school. South Miami Heights Elementary School. Yeah. I think I remember my first grade teacher's name, Mrs. Calvin. She was an elderly woman. She had gray hair and probably in her 60s. I think I loved her. She was a kind old soul. For they have taken of their daughters, the Canaanites, for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of the lands, but with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the priests, princes and the rulers have been chief in this trespass. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment, my mantle, and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down astonished. He pulled his freaking hair out, people. Think about it. So, what's the solution? Then were assembled unto me everyone that trembled at the words of the God of Israel because of the transgression of those that had been carried away. And I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice and at the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness. And having rent my garments and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God and said, O my God, I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee. My God, for our iniquities are increased over our head and our trespass has grown up unto the heavens. Since the days of our father have we been in a great trespass unto this day for our iniquities we have our kings and our priests have delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands to the sword to captivity and to a spoil and to confusion of face as it is this day and now for a little space grace hath been showed from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in this holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. For we were bondmen, yet our God hath not forsaken us in our bondage, but have extended mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia to give us a reviving to set up the house of our God and to repair the desolations thereof and to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. And now, O oh our God, 
what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments, which thou hast commanded to thy servants, the prophets, saying, The land unto which ye go to possess it, it is an unclean land. It is an unclean land with the filthiness of the people of the lands, with their abominations, which have filled it from one end to another with their uncleanness. Wow. When, when's the last time you heard this preached in a church? You never will. Verse 12. Now therefore give not, give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take their daughters unto your sons, nor seek their peace or their wealth forever, that ye may be strong and eat the good of the land and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. But Chaplain Bob, that's racist. Argue with the Lord. Don't argue with me. I'm just giving you what the Bible says. And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great trespass, seeing that thou, our God, hast punished us less than our iniquities deserve. Boy, I'll tell you what, I can attest to that. God has punished me a lot less than what I deserved. Seeing that our that seeing thou seeing that thou our God has punished us less than our iniquities deserve, and has given us such deliverance as this, should we again break thy commandments and join in affinity with the people of these abominations? Wouldst not thou be angry with us till thou hast consumed us, so that there should be no remnant nor escaping? O Lord God of Israel, thou art righteous. For we remain yet escaped, as it is this day. Behold, we are before thee in our trespass, for we cannot stand before, before thee because of this. Why? Because they intermarried with the Canaanites. Chapter 10, verse 1. Now when Ezra had prayed, and when he had confessed, weeping, and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. Why? Because they'd married the Canaanites. And Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away, to put away all the wives and such as are born of them according to the counsel of my Lord and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God and let it be done according to the law. What does it mean put away? Divorce, separation, take your heathen children, your half-breed, satanic, hybrid children, divorce your wife or your satanic, hybrid husband, and tell them, take your satanic, hybrid kids and get the, get the heck out of Dodge. Get out of here. Uh... That's the harsh reality that just isn't taught anymore. But yet it's Bible. Yeah. Verse 4. And don't argue with me, argue with the Lord. Arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee. We also will be with thee. Be of good courage and do it. Then arose Ezra and made the chief priests, the Levites, and all Israel to swear that they, would, they should do according to this word, and they swear. Then Ezra rose up from before the house of God and went into the chamber of Johanan, the son of Eliashib, and when he came thither, 
He did eat no bread nor drink water, for he mourned because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. And they made proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem unto all the children of the captivity that they should gather themselves together unto Jerusalem. And that whosoever would not come within three days, according to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all his substance should be forfeited and himself separated from the congregation of those that had been carried away. Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month on the twentieth day of the month, and all the people sat in the street of the house of God, trembling because of this matter, and for the great rain. And Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. You know, people like Billy Goat Graham will lie to you and say, oh, well, you know, they just married unbelievers. They just married unbelievers. You know, well, if they just married unbelievers, why didn't they preach to them? And tell them, oh, well, this is about the Lord God of Israel. Why? Why didn't they, you know, preach to them, this is the true God of Israel, the God of gods, Lord of lords, King of kings? No, that's not how it worked. He said, separate. Separate. Verse 11. Strange wives, people. Separate yourselves. That's what they were told to do. Then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, As thou hast said, so must we do. But the people are many, and it is a time of much rain, and we are not able to stand without. Neither is this a work of one day or two, for we are many that have transgressed in this thing. Let now our rulers and all the congregation stand, and let all them which have taken strange wives in our cities, come at appointed times, and with them the elders of every city and the judges thereof, until the fierce wrath of our God for this matter be turned from us. Only Jonathan, the son of Asahel, Asahel, Asahel and Ahaziah, the son of Tikvah, were employed about this matter, and Meshulam and Shabbathani and the Levite helped them. And the children of the captivity did so. And Ezra the priest, with certain chief of the fathers, after the house of their fathers, and all of them by their names, were separated and sat down in the first day of the tenth month to examine the matter. And they made an end with all the men that had taken strange wives by the first day of the first month. And among the sons of the priests that were found that had taken strange wives, namely of the sons of Jeshua, the son of Josedek, and his brethren, Messiah and Eliezer and Jerob and Gedaliah. And they gave their hands that they would put away their wives, and being guilty, they offered a ram of the flock for their trespass. Uh, and now we've got a bunch of genealogy, which I'm really not interested in. There's a bunch of them. Verse 44, all these had taken strange wives, and some of, them, some of them had wives by whom they had children. Oh, yeah. Now, if you want some more background, you can read the book of Nehemiah, which is the, um, when you got to Ezra chapter 10, you'd turn the page, well, there's Nehemiah. And it gives you similar background. Let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 44. I guess uh, start in verse 21. Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. 
Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. For thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that stretcheth abroad the earth by myself, that frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish, that confirmeth the word of his servant, and performeth the counsel of his messengers, that saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah ye shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. Now remember, uh, Jerusalem had been a major metropolis. It had been destroyed. But now, the Lord's going to raise it back up, I will raise up the decayed places thereof. Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah ye shall be built. Okay. That, uh, verse 27. That saith to the deep, Be dry, and I will dry up thy rivers. Verse 28. Listen to this. That saith of Cyrus. Remember, Cyrus was one of the, uh, well, was the king of Persia. That saith of Cyrus, He is my shepherd. That saith of Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Let's take a look at Zechariah chapter 3. Now, take a look at... Um, well, let's just, let's read it. Verse 1. Zechariah, Z-E-C-H-A-R-I-A-H. Uh, I always get Zephaniah and Zechariah mixed up. Because they sound so much alike. But this is Z-E-C-H, Zechariah. Verse 1. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest... Now, all those people that say Yeshua, I think the correct pronunciation is Joshua, just like you got right here. Joshua does indeed have reference to salvation, but I don't know. Joshua is the sixth book in the King James Bible in the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. He took over for Moses after he died. But this is not the same Joshua. This is a different Joshua. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Oh, yeah. There's Satan trying to mess things up. And the Lord said unto Satan, uh, this is interesting, And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee. Huh? Why would the Lord say, The Lord rebuke thee? Who is this angel of the Lord? Is this uh, Christ before he was born of a human body? Pre-incarnate Christ? Very, very possible. I'm of that opinion. Can I prove it? Yeah, probably not. But I think it is. Verse 2, And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Uh, what did they used to uh, do in the Old West? Uh, wouldn't they build a fire and stick a brand in it? You know, a metal poker with a symbol on it. And then they would put it on the cow's backside and burn their the brand. Oh, yeah. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now, Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. 
And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment, clothing. Ah, maybe those are the wedding garments of the Lamb, right, that were washed in his blood. Uh, didn't we read about that in Revelation? Oh, yeah. White garments. Uh, if you're interested in going into detail in this in Zechariah, I actually did a Bible study on Zechariah chapter 3, and you can go into detail where I do all the cross-referencing for all the things that I'm mentioning. And if anybody's interested, I'll be happy to find it and post it in a comment, but I don't want to make this a three or four hour study. So I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I said, let them fair, uh, set a fair mitre upon his head. What's a mitre? It's a type of a hat. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith, thus saith the Lord of hosts. Now, listen to this. The, the angel of the Lord is speaking in the first person, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways. This is why I think this is Christ before he was God in the flesh. Because he's speaking in the first person. If thou will walk in my ways, if it was an angel just like Michael or Gabriel, he wouldn't say my ways. He would say uh, the Lord's ways. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou will walk in my ways, and if thou will keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among thee that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at, for behold, I bring forth my servant, the branch. What did Jesus say he was? Verse 9, For behold the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Who's a stone? In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall every man, shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine, the symbol of Israel, and under the fig tree, the symbol of Judah. All right. All right, we're going to go to the book of Haggai, chapter 2. Haggai, H-A-G-G-A-I, chapter 2. We're going to read the whole thing. Now, this ties in with Ezra and Nehemiah. Haggai was a prophet that lived same time period. Verse 1. In the seventh month of the one and twentieth day of the month came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Yeah, is there, how many of you, how many of you old folks remember uh, the uh, temple of the Lord during the days of Solomon and, you know, um, you know, back in the old days, back when it had gold-covered walls, right? Who was left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Now, remember, it's been 70 years. I mean, if you had a guy that was kid that was 10 years old when he was taken into captivity and he returned he'd be at least 80 years old 81 82 you know i mean there's or there, everybody would be in their 70s everybody at least in their 70s 
They were in captivity for 70 years. We covered that in a previous study. Verse 3, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yeah, compared to the old glory, this house was nothing. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word which I covenant, covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. In the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, 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 came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Ask now the priest concerning the law, saying, If one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with his skirt do touch bread or pottage or wine or oil or any meat, shall it be holy? And the priest answered and said, No. Then said Haggai, If one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, It shall be unclean. Then answered Haggai and said, so is this people. Oh yeah, so is this people. They're unclean. So is this people, and so is this nation before me, saith the Lord. And so is every work of their hands, and that which they offer there is unclean. And now I pray you, consider from this day and upward, from before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord. Since those days were... When one came to a heap of twenty measures, there were but ten. When one came to the press fat for to draw fifty vessels out of the press, there were but twenty. I smote you with blasting, and with mildew, and with hail, in all the labors of your hands. Yet ye turned not to me, saith the Lord. So, in other words, they were working... The Lord smote him with blasting. Uh, what was that? Like a sandstorm? You know, a blast of wind? And with mildew. Uh, have you ever heard of black mold? We know what that is in Florida. Uh, when I lived in Colorado, we never had mold. Never. Uh, air was, you know, it was semi-arid. Uh, it was a very dry climate. Uh, you would take a bath hang up your towel and a couple hours later it's dry the towel's dry it, you know when you wash clothes you didn't need a dryer just stick them outside and they'll dry the air was very dry but uh, the Lord smote Israel with blasting with mildew and with hail you know what hail does to crops well, let me tell you something hail is some rough stuff I've seen cars destroyed by hailstorms in Colorado. Destroyed. I mean, absolutely destroyed. Windows broken. Windshields broken. And uh, cars were so dented up, it looked like somebody took a ball-peen hammer and hit the whole thing all over. So, the Lord destroyed all the labors of their hands, yet they turned not to me, saith the Lord. Verse 18, Consider now from this day and upward, from the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, even from that day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed yet in the barn? 
Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree hath not brought forth from this day, will I bless you. From this day will I bless you. And again the word of the Lord came into Haggai in the fourth and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth, and I will overthrow, I will overthrow the king, uh, the, I'm sorry, <clears throat> excuse me, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen. And I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them, and the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, saith the Lord, and I will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. Now we're going to read Haggai chapter 1. I should have read this first, but I... I missed it. I missed it. So, just remember, this should go before what I just read. Sometimes I do that. It's kind of hard to remember everything. So, Haggai chapter 1, verse 1. In the second year of Darius, Darius, the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, that the time, uh, that, I'm sorry, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye that dwell in your sealed houses? And this house lie waste? Um, so these people are living in their sealed houses. You know, they're sealed up against the weather. You know, they're not leaking water when it rains. You know, they're in their houses. Their houses are finished, in other words. But the house of the Lord lays waste. The time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put them into a bag with holes. Uh, it's sort of like you get paid, you stick the money in your pocket, and then you get home and you find there's a hole in your pocket and your wages are gone. Verse 7, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. You looked for much and lo, it came to little and when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste and ye run every man unto his own house. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labors, uh, and upon all the labor of the land, hands. Then Zerubbabel the son of Shiltiel, and Joshua the son of Josedek the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God had sent him and the people did fear before the Lord. Then spake Haggai the Lord's messenger and the Lord's message unto the people saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel the son of Shiltiel, governor of Judah and the spirit of Joshua the son of Josedek, the high priest. 
and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, in the four and twentieth day of the sixth month, in the second year of Darius, the king. All right, everybody, guess what? We are going to do, uh, unless I can think of something else, we're going to be doing the New Testament, which is the conclusion of, which will be the conclusion of this uh, study of the temple. Because ultimately, Christ was the high priest, right? And his sacrifice. And uh, that's, that's where we're going. You know, the, uh, the book of Hebrews, the, the author of the book of Hebrews didn't tell you who he was. Personally, I think it was Paul. Uh, Paul was the only one that had rabbinical training of all the apostles. But uh, you know what? They didn't like Paul back in his day. And they don't like Paul today, the Judaizers. Yep, they want to go back to Judaism. That's what all this Hebrew root stuff is all about. So, all right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.